What's up, everybody? Hope you're having a good day. A really fun technique, and this was created by Alessandro Boncio, and it shows how to take a thread and stitch it through a piece of fabric. So we're gonna jump in, and all I have is a cube here, and it's got pretty low settings. We can increase these for the final render. And we're gonna start with this stitching by using a matrix. So um, hit Shift C to bring up this dialog and just type in matrix. And in this matrix, we're gonna change the count to one, one, one. So we just have a single matrix and we're gonna make it quite a bit smaller. Under transform, we'll take the scale to 0 0.05. All right, so here is our little matrix and we're gonna want this to animate up and down to have the stitching on effect. Let's hide that cube for right now. And we're gonna animate this by using a formula. So hit Shift Z and type in formula. And we're gonna do this one right here, uh, the MoGraph one, and hit enter. All right, so it should be already added to the matrix. Let's hit play and see what happens. You can see that it's ping-ponging sideways. So let's go to the formula and under parameters, let's turn off the X position here and we'll also turn off scale. And we want it animating up and down on the Y, maybe four centimeters, so we'll hit four. All right, so here's our animation going up and down, but we want the thread to be going left to right also. So hold down shift while you're clicking on both formula and matrix, and then hit alter option and G to put them in a null together. And we're gonna animate that null. So we'll move the null over to the left and we'll make a keyframe. Then we'll go to the end of our timeline We'll move it to the right and we'll make another keyframe. Now, if you click on one of your keyframes, you can hit Control A to highlight all of your keyframes, right click on them, and we're gonna change it to linear. All right, so here's our animation. We have our matrix going up and down and it's animating left to right. And now let's add a tracer to trace this animation. Uh, in the tracer, we need a trace link. So we'll scroll down that null and grab that matrix and drag it into the trace link. And now we will be tracing the animation of that matrix. All right, so now we need to add some actual geometry. We can do that by going to add a end side. So we'll add an end side and let's also add a sweep. So inside that sweep, we'll drag our tracer and then our end side and we'll make the end side scale 0.05 as well. So it's pretty small. And now we have some actual geometry. Now, if we wanna uh, make this a bit of a smoother spline, we can go into the tracer and change the type to maybe Bezier. You could also do B-spline, change the intermediate points to uh, subdivided. Now we'll have a bit of a smoother animation. All right, so if we turn our cube back on, this is the base of our stitching, uh, but we want it to go up and down and then resolve so that the stitch is flat on this cube. So we need to figure out how to do that. And we're gonna do it using a squash and stretch deformer. So we'll type in squash and stretch, and we're going to put that squash and stretch inside of the tracer because we're gonna squash that tracer. All right, so under the parameters, the two main ones are factor and I believe it's aspect. So if we hit play, it looks like nothing's changed. If we drag this factor down, you can see that we're really messing with the squash of this uh, spline. So let's make that say 4%. Uh, but another thing we want to do is play with that aspect. So if we pull that down, you can see that we're pulling that thread closer and closer together. And if we turn our cube back on, you can see that this is what we're looking for, a stitch that sort of resolves on here. Now let's take that aspect and let's stretch it out a little bit further. And let's play with that factor, maybe 3%, something like that. All right, so that's looking pretty good. If you want these stitches to go on faster, you can go to the formula and under, uh, let's see here, variables, under frequency, you can double that, and then the stitching will go on faster. But that's gonna mess with uh, some of the other settings as well, so you'll have to tweak some things. So I'll undo that, but that's where you can increase the frequency if you want to. All right, so this is a nice place to resolve these stitches, but we want the uh, animation to start up high, like the, the uh, threads kind of going up with a needle and then down and then resolving onto the cube. So we're gonna add a field and it's going to be a linear field. So we'll click on linear field and let's zoom out and make this linear field very, very narrow. So it's only affecting a very small band here. We'll zoom in here. And you can see that as I pull it through here, we're gonna be pulling up these stitches. You can also see that they're overlapping each other. I think I had the aspect at minus two. Let's change that to zero and that should resolve that issue so they're not overlapping. 
All right, so we have our field here, but it's not animating with the stitches. So we want it to animate so that it looks something like this, right? Uh, we want it to follow that keyframe. And the way that we're gonna do that is we'll go to the beginning and we'll put it right onto that first matrix. And let's take this linear field and drag it out and put it inside of the matrix. And then it's gonna inherit this keyframe and it will move along with that matrix. So then let's see what it looks like. So that's the basic setup, and now it's very easy to tweak. You can increase the speed by going to that formula, and you can also go to that squash and stretch and play with these aspect and factor settings to place these stitches farther apart or closer together. All right, so one last thing that will make this look even more realistic is if we have it interact with this cube. This is gonna slow things down a little bit, but I'll show you how it would work if you wanted to add this. We're gonna add a, a collision. So we'll add a collision deformer, and we're gonna put that inside of the cube. And in that collision deformer, we have a colliders tab and an object slot. We're gonna drag the sweep nerve. So whenever the sweep hits the uh, cube, it's gonna make a collision. All right, so the settings are pretty crazy right now. So we'll go to the advanced tab. Let's make the scale quite a bit smaller, like 0.3. We're gonna increase the steps a bunch. Uh, take the stretch down to four. We'll increase the relax to 16. Stiffness is probably okay, maybe 50%. And then structure and flex, we're gonna put those way down to like 10%. And we'll hit play and just see what this looks like. So then you see as the thread comes up, it's sort of puckering. And then as it goes back down, it's going to collide with that cube and sort of settle. Now this doesn't look very good because it needs to be smoothed out or we need more geometry. So to smooth it out, you would just add a smoothing deformer and drag that underneath the collision here. And you can click initialize and change the type to relax and increase the iterations to maybe 20, maybe drop the stiffness a bit. And that's gonna just smooth out the animation overall. We can click initialize and then hit play and see what this looks like. The one thing that will make it look a lot more realistic is if you go to this cube and you add some more subdivisions on the X and the Z. Uh, that will give you a lot more of a realistic result, but you can probably do that for your final render. But as you can see by adding that smooth, now you get a much more realistic kind of a pucker of this fabric, and then as it sits down, it sort of has this nice little dimple, and it looks a lot more realistic. So that's the basic technique of adding stitching in Cinema 4D. Super fun technique, and huge shout out again to Alessandro for coming up with this technique and sharing with all of you. Hope you found it useful. We'll talk to you next time. Ciao.